Hello there, DFS family. Uh, welcome back to the Sunday School DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. I'm kind of new at this, so bear with me. I don't get a host very often, uh, but I am Dave Eddy. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Corporal Eddy. And as you know, I am, of course, just blessed by the presence of my handsome sidekick, uh, Mr. Patrick Mikowski, who has a little bit of a sore ass this week from the uh, from the beatdown that I gave him. But if you like to follow losers, um, you can find him on Twitter at PattyMac33. Now, before we get started, uh, please go ahead and do us a quick little favor and hit that like button. And if you are enjoying this podcast, do yourself a little favor and, and hit that subscribe button. And then if you want to keep up uh, or get a leg up on all your buddies, uh, swing on over to fantasysixpack.net where you can check out more great content. Well, um, I uh, I gave Pat a good old beatdown last week, like I said, by the tune of about 195 to about 155, uh, led by my main man himself, Joseph Archibald Burrow. I had him and Boyd stacked up together. Uh, I ran back Kareem Hunt. Uh, let's see what Patrick's main stack was here. He went Kyler, Murray, and Hopkins and ran it back with nobody. Uh. Well, that was stupid. <laughs> um, all right. Well, anyways, um, this week, Patrick, um, you can go ahead and play the role of little brother, uh, which I think is kind of ironic as Michigan and Michigan State play this week, and Patrick and I are are both diehard uh, U of M fans, so I think a little brother uh, insult there will will hit home with them pretty good. So all I've got to say about last week, Patrick, I'll keep it really simple. Two words, suck it. I'm back, baby. Yeah, you took full advantage of the fact that you finally fucking won a week. Yeah. Uh, So congratulations to you. Um, I guess we'll let you bask in your glory this week. Oh, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. But I plan on getting back on track, so that's all good. I'm glad you're having fun with it. I'm glad that it put a smile on your face. Um, so I, I guess we'll we'll let her rip this week, and we'll see how it goes. We will. I tell you, I told you I'm going to start playing my, my tournament, my best tournament lineup against you, and I warned you it was going to whoop some ass. So uh, no more cash lineups here. You get the big boy lineup now. You've graduated. Well, it's about time. I'm mm-hmm. glad that I'm finally getting your best shot. Thanks, yep. David. You're very Feel welcome, privilege. sir. It's the least I could do. Well, let's get into this nonsense for uh, week eight here, Patrick. Uh, why don't you go ahead and lead me off with uh, your your gospel or maybe gospels this week? Yeah, man. I am going to give you all a two for one because... I just don't think that there's any way you can play one without the other. And I'm going to give you a stack for my gospel. Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Rodgers at 7,600. Adams at 8,800. Vikes versus the Fudge Packers. Uh, In my opinion, this is the absolute best football I've ever seen Aaron Rodgers play. Averaging 24 fantasy points a game. Thrown for 17 touchdowns, only two interceptions uh, on the season, and uh, 1,700 yards. Uh, Three of those weeks, he didn't even have Adams. So he is absolutely lighting the world on fire. Uh, Stud receiver is back with a vengeance last week. Week one, they played this Minnesota this Minnesota team and Rodgers went for 364 and four touchdowns to the tune of 33.8 fantasy points. His ace in the hole, Mr. Adams went for 44.6, 14 catches, 156 yards, two touchdowns. The Vikings are giving up almost 300 yards a game, two and a half touchdowns a game, 25 fantasy points a game to quarterbacks, not to mention 14 catches a game, 200 yards and 32 fantasy points a game to receivers. A very good chance that I may hinge my entire weekend building all of my lineups around this stack and running it back with Thielen or Jefferson. It's an absolute can't miss. Get her done. 
Fudge Packers, Rogers, Adams, big weekend. Well, I'll tell you what, Patrick. Um, the top three stacks this weekend, two of which are Rogers, Adams, and then either running it back with Thielen or Jefferson. We'll get into my thoughts on that here shortly. Um, do you want to take a stab at what my top stack will be, my top game stack? Um, knowing you, it's probably going to be like Brett Favre and Greg yep. Jennings. Yep. And who am I running back with? Um, you're probably going to run it back with Warren Moon. No, sh- nope, nope. Shannon Sharp. <laughs> oh, Shannon Sharp. Yeah, can't start totally two quarterbacks. Can't start two quarterbacks. No, that's right. That's yeah. right. Rookie mo- super flex. Gotcha. Rookie mistake. No, I, I, obviously, you know, Rogers Adams is going to be extremely popular this week. It's just a matter of you know how you want to run it back, but. My top stack this week is going to be your boy Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett, and probably running it back with Kittle, but maybe, just maybe, running it back with Brandon Ayuk as well. So, just a just a heads up. My but but my gospel for this week. Um, well, let me ask you this question here first, Patrick. Do you know of anybody? Can you just think of anybody that doesn't like to pay up at quarterback? Um, nope. You can't think of anybody? Not, Maybe a co-host not, of yours? Not, not a single person that I would be willing to give that props to, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe David? You? Me, Patrick. I do not like paying up for quarterbacks, all right? Derek Carr, $5,500. Raiders versus the Browns. Derek Carr is the 19th most expensive quarterback on the slate. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me uh, because he has got a great matchup this week. Uh, The Browns are allowing the 7th most points to QBs this year. They are 10th worst against wide receivers and 3rd worst against tight ends. Carr not only has been um, over 20 DK points, I can't even read correctly, Carr has only been under 20, 20 DK points uh, this year twice, and he has not been facing you know a very soft schedule. This game has the second highest over under on the day, and the Redskins or the Redskins, the Raiders sneak in as the eighth highest expected team total this week. I think the Raiders are going to go overlooked this week, and I'm going to be overweight on them with some Raider stacks running it back with Hunt if. Chubb is out, or Landry if that backfield is fully healthy. So, my my gospel this week, Derek fucking Carr. Uh, you just wanted to say the word Chubb. That's the only thing that I took from that. Did did that? Did my gospel give you a Chubb? Um, not that interested in Derek Carr. Ugh. Um, I'm just I'm not a fan. Of him, you don't you don't I'm like good, good matchups and great values. You know, I just I don't think he's got the right kind of weaponry to put up some big numbers. I just I know he's got some decent guys, but you don't like Darren I'm Waller. Not, I do like Darren Waller this week. I do like Waller, uh, but he's not going to get the ball thrown to him twenty times. And Nelson Aguilar or whatever the heck his name is. Uh, I think he's a wide receiver for the Raiders. Uh, him and Hunter Renfro, you know, they just don't do it for me. Well, I love with it, man. Well, we'll revisit this next week um, because I'm telling you, Derek Carr, I'm not saying he's going to be the highest scoring quarterback on the slate, but I'm saying that value wise, he he's going he, he's going to he's going to be good. He's going to be very yeah. very low owned, but he's going to put up good points. And this is a very tough week again, salary wise. So um, you know you can save some good money with a Car Waller and Hunt, um, or even run it back. As a matter of fact, um, with another guy that I know you're going to talk about later, if you really want to save money, and I, I and I'm going to do it. Um, but anyways, enough about that nonsense. Um, Let's get into our devil for the week, and, and I think I've got a good one. I think that this week for me is um, very off script. I think it's every one of these, well, all except for the one after this one for me, I think is one that in this regard, not a lot of people are in on. Um, so my devil for the week is Tyreek Hill. 6700 bucks as the Chiefs face the Jets. 
Uh, now, Tyreek Hill hasn't been bad this year per se, but he has not been as good as you would expect for DFS purposes. First of all, he does not have a 100-yard receiving game this year. Now, granted, that is not a huge deal, but it is a little bit surprising. Uh, but more importantly, he has only hit that magical 3x number on his price tag just once this year. Now, ironically, that came against um, a very solid uh, Ravens D. But listen to this, Patrick. Hope you're taking notes, Patrick. I know you're driving, but you're going to want to write this down. All right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Got this the is, pen out. Yep. Trying not to run into people. We're yes. doing well. Yes. Yeah, focus on, focus on writing legibly. Gotcha. Now, Tyreek Hill, he is only 35th in the league over the past four weeks with only 6.3 targets per game. 27th in his team's market share at just a slight bit over 20%. Now, in what looks like a very juicy matchup against the Jets, they are actually surprisingly 20th in the league in points against wide receivers. So, not great, but they're not in the bottom 10, which is where you would expect them to be. For me, all things point to Tyreek having a disappointing game this week, and I am not going to have any of it, Patrick. Uh, yeah, I actually considered fading Mahomes uh, prior to the choice that I actually made um, because I'm kind of on the same page that you are with that. I think the Jets, although they're not horrible, um, they've shown some sporadic life uh in that secondary and i i agree with you david i'm i would be doing the same thing no hill and i probably won't have any mahomes either so uh good call i like it so for me my fade my devil uh is another quarterback like i said i was leaning towards mahomes but I'm, I'm going to go with Mr. Drew Brees, uh, the Saints at the Bears, 6,300 bucks for Brees. Uh, the Bears are ranked second, number two against quarterbacks, uh, 13.43 fantasy points a game. Uh, it looks like Brees is going to once again be without Emmanuel Sanders, once again without Mike Thomas. Uh, it's not that Breeze has been horrible by any means this year. He's averaging over 20 fantasy points a game. Uh, but he just doesn't perform as well on the road. In fact, two of his three interceptions on the season are on the road. Uh, it's going to be a balmy 38 at Soldier Field with 20-mile-an-hour winds is what they're looking at. Uh, it's an off day for Drew Breeze in the Breeze. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of Camara, Alvin Camara on the ground this weekend. So I just don't like the matchup. Bears go 6-2, 16-13 ball game, by the way, uh, over the Saints in Soldier Field for the Bears. Yep, I, I, I see all that happening. Absolutely. Why don't you go ahead and just continue right on with your Archangel, uh, your pivot for this week. All right. Well, we'll keep rolling with it. You know, uh, Titans at the Bengals, kind of an interesting matchup this weekend. Uh, I've got AJ Green as my Archangel pivot, $4,500 uh, for AJ Green, 24 targets in the last two weeks compared to Boyd, who's priced at $6,600 uh, with 21 targets, and Higgins, who's priced at $5,600. With 13 targets, uh, a certain co-host of mine uh, brought this guy kind of back into the picture for me last week. I kind of forgot all about him, to be honest. Knew he was around. Um, and I think a lot of people are kind of in the same boat that I was. Um, you know, and, and I just don't think people are going to be rostering him. I think more people are going to be leaning towards Higgins. I think more people are going to be leaning towards Boyd. Um, the Titans give up 24 fantasy points a game to opposing quarterbacks, and we know how much Joe Burrow likes to throw the ball, and he has no mixing again, so he's got to turn around and hand it to Benatardi or ben Giovanni, whatever his name is. The mustache 2.0. 
Yeah, uh, he's handing it off to a, a, a tote bag. Uh, Tennessee gives up 28 fantasy points a game to opposing wide receivers. There's going to be a lot of Joe Burrow throwing the ball around, and I think he's kind of caught on to the fact that A.J. Green uh, is pretty damn good. So more targets going that way. Uh, he's going to chunk that pumpkin. That pumpkin's going to be chunking over to Green. Easy money when we talk about that magical 3X uh, return on our investment this week for me. A.J. Green. Yeah, man, I've been liking um, Burroughs a lot more and more and more lately. Uh, but this is going to be another good matchup. I I wouldn't hesitate at all, and I'm sure that I'll have some Burrow with a combination of, you know, Boyd or Green um, or Higgins and run that son of a bitch back with Henry. Uh, yeah, I, I like it. I like it. I like it. So for me, we're kind of going to go back to what we talked about earlier, um, you know, about Rodgers and, you know, Adam Stack. And my pivot for the week is going to be Justice Jefferson uh, coming at $6,500 in that Vikings versus Packers game. Pretty much all I've been hearing so far, and I know it's still technically early in the week, granted it's Friday, and normally we do this on Thursday, but all the talk I hear is constantly about running it back with Thielen. And listen, obviously that's a fine play, um, but rightfully so, that gets to be crazy expensive. Um, so unless you know we've got you know Joe Mixon out again and Aaron Jones is out and you know, we've got some running backs that we can save some coin on. It's going to be yep. difficult to get to to that stack and still be able to roster, you know, a tournament winning type lineup. But as you saw last week, if you didn't own Adams and Thielen or Adam or Adams and Lockett or, or one or the other, you weren't winning money last week. So um, you may have no choice but to, you know, pay up there. Um, for me though, like I said, no doubt I'm going to have you know a lot of exposure to this game, but I'm going to be overweight on Justin Jefferson. Um, I think that the Packers' incredible corner, uh, Jair Alexander, is going to be matched up on Thielen, thus giving Jefferson much softer coverage. Uh, snap counts, targets, market share, uh, all of that slightly favors Thielen, uh, which shouldn't come as any surprise, but you know not as much as you may just think. Um, $700 cheaper is what Jefferson's coming in this week. I think he's got a better position, um, you know, as far as, like I said, you know, not having to go against Alexander, I think. And so you take that little bit of savings in mind, and I think that Jefferson is going to be my, my higher play in those runbacks. Yeah, I like, uh, I like where your head's at. Um, I would personally play Jefferson over Thielen as well. Uh, for me, um, you know, it, you, you tend to be seeing kind of a trend a little bit where uh, Cousins is, seems to be finding Jefferson um, a little bit more often, even the numbers don't really kind of play that way. I, I like Jefferson for the $700 savings over Thielen as well, because like you said, it's just crazy, stupid, expensive uh, to run that stack, so... All right, so what I just I want you to know what I just wrote down on my notepad for the week. I just wrote down play Thielen over Jefferson. Because <laughs> if Pat, if Patrick is on Jefferson, then that means it is a Thielen week. Disregard everything I just said. Uh, you got to go uh, Rodgers, Adams, and Thielen, folks. You heard it here first. Yep, you got me, David. All right, okay, buddy. you got me figured out. So I got you. All right. What do you need to do to win, I guess? <laughs> Take what I can get, man. Yeah, you, you need to. Let's get to that heresy. Let's get to the contrarian play of the weekend. Um, I think this is probably going to be the best contrarian play that we have for the entire season. Like I said, I, I love my I love my notes this week. Um, I'm going with a guy that I don't think people are going to think of um, as contrarian in general, but especially um, this week, so I think it makes it extremely slick. I'm going Lamar Jackson, 7400 bucks. Ravens versus Steelers. Rivalry matchup. Lamar gets a very, very tough matchup here. Um, without facing extremely tough competition the past five weeks, Axon Jackson has only hit 3x value twice in that time frame. 
Now, Steelers are currently six toughest against quarterbacks in points allowed this year. So as it sits on paper, the MVP is in for another tough day. I actually think this matchup presents a very interesting opportunity for him this week, however. Uh, clearly, we know Jackson is an elite talent. So having you know a good day against any defense should never come as a shock. Um, but with how much the Steelers like to blitz and pressure the QB... I actually think that there's a relatively good chance um, that that's going to work into Jackson's uh, favor. Uh, Jackson, I think, is going to be able to take advantage of, you know, those blitzes and be able to use those legs a little bit more now that he's healthy. I think this could very well be a game where Lamar goes over 100 yards on the ground. You throw in, let's say, 200 passing yards, two touchdowns, and you get him posting a very nice value even with a relatively expensive price tag. Now, for me, the kicker on this play, and this is what makes it a contrarian play for me, is I don't think that Lamar is going to be over 5% owned this week. So, make sure you do not forget and get some Lamar Jackson in your MME builds this week. I... I don't hate it, Dave. I don't because, you know, if you take a look at my notes, I'm on the other side of the ball with mine. So I, I'm I'm smelling what you're laying down, fella. Uh, and my heresy play for the week is James Conner. 6400 bucks running back for the Steelers at the Ravens. And it's strictly volume for me. That's it. And, and this guy gets the rock. He's had 18 touches in five straight games. Pittsburgh has been great. And that's an understatement against the run this season. Or the Ravens, I'm sorry. The Ravens have been great uh, against the run this season. Uh, only 82 yards a game, little over four yards a carry. Um, only 13 fantasy points a game to opposing running backs. One. One rushing touchdown they've given up on the season. I'm going to play Connor. Like I said, it's strictly volume based. It's talent based. The guy's going to get the rock. They're going to turn around and hand him the ball 18 to 20 times. Hard smash mouth football game in Baltimore. Um, you know, those are two of Davies' favorite measurables. I am going to run some James Connor because I don't think. He's going to be five percent on this week either. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, he he definitely fits the bill. Rule number one: play good players. There he yes. is. Number two: volume over matchup. This is a a definite example of someone who's going to get the volume for sure, minus injury. But you can't predict. You can't play that shit. So, um, you know, against a very tough matchup. So, um, yeah, I think that both of our contrarian picks are volume over matchup, and we're playing good players. So. Yeah, I like it. Um, the hard one. The hardest one for sure. And again, I'm telling you, man, my notes are fire this week. I, I think my Hail Mary is, for hey, what hey, for hey, what hey, it is, is fantastic. Dave, are you excited about your notes this week? I mean, you could say that. You know I don't like to brag or anything. <laughs> no, no not know. at all. I, I, I can see your head swelling as I'm driving down the road and I'm a few hundred miles away from yeah, you. Yeah, I don't like to brag. Everyone, you can ask anybody. I am by far the most humble person that you've ever met. Um, I mean, Absolutely. without question. Agree more. Without question. So let's save. i tell you what. Let, let's go ahead. We'll save yours here. Um, and let me get to mine, okay? Because this is going okay. to be a surprise for a lot of people. Um, and this goes right along with me talking about fading Tyreek Hill. I'm going a different pass catcher on the Chiefs. Not going Travis Kelsey, because that's obviously not a Hail Mary. We're going to Marcus Robinson. $3,100. $100 more than the minimum in that Chiefs versus Jets game. So, if I'm fading Tyreek, then naturally, I think that there's going to be other opportunities uh, for the Chiefs this weekend. And I think that Robinson could be that guy this week. So, in their passing game, only... Kelsey, Hill, and Robinson are seeing over 70% of the snaps over the past three games. In fact, Robinson outsnapped Hill two weeks ago when he posted a 95% snap percentage. Now, last week, he only saw uh, one target, but 
in the two weeks prior to that, he actually was out targeting Hill by a 10 to 9 count. Now, if you're going to be like me and fading Hill this week, be different. Gain leverage. Pair your Mahomes stacks with some Robinson to go along with Kelsey and make a play to take down a tournament. I'm likely to only have one or two KC stacks this week, so um, you know I'm not going for the gusto with them by any stretch of the imagination. But six catches for 90 yards or four catches for 50 yards in a TD wouldn't even get him to five. It wouldn't even get him to three X, Patrick. That gets him to five X. So it's not going to take a whole lot for Demarcus Robinson to be the difference between winning hundreds of dollars and winning thousands of dollars. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Uh, the price tag, you're right. The price tag is great for yep. Robinson. Volume. Um, the upside at that price range is insane uh, because, I mean, like you said, one big play and you're 5X, and it's completely possible and realistic with Pat Mahomes slinging the ball around, so... And, you know, what could very well happen, I mean, that game's got like a 20-point spread. So let's say that this game is out of hand halfway through the third quarter. Extremely possible. Don't you agree? I do agree, yes. So, so what happens? They start sitting, you know, you know, Kelsey and Hill, you know, aren't playing so often. All of a sudden, Hardman and Robinson start getting in the game more often. Uh, Mahomes is still out there because they're not pissing the game away or anything. They're just, you know, kind of, you know, trying to save save guys. And all of a sudden, you yeah, start you get seeing a little Le'Veon Bell action in there late in the game. Yep. All of a sudden, you start seeing Demarcus Robinson getting even more snaps if he didn't already, yeah. you know, get some touches, get some yards, maybe even score while they were onslaughting him early on. So, again, I'm not going to be super heavy on him, but I'm definitely going to force some home stacks for the simple reason of stacking Robinson because I, I don't, th- I, I don't think he'll be over what three percent owned. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. So, I, I mean, I'm going to stick uh, with a guy that catches the ball as well um, with my Hail Mary for the week. So it's definitely not Eric Ebron. Got it. Okay. It is not Eric Ebron. You would, as soon your as, favorite tight end yeah. of all time. As soon as you said cat, not the guy that can catch the ball, I, just, I instantly knew that you were going somewhere else. He, that's just how much. Yeah, that's just was, how much knowledge I have, Patrick. He was out right yeah. then and there. Yep. So I'm I'm gonna go back to that Raiders and Dog Pound game that we talked a little bit about earlier, and I'm gonna go with Harrison Bryant, tight end for the Cleveland Brownies, thirty two hundred bucks. No Austin Hooper again this weekend, so Bryant becomes Cleveland's top option at the tight end position. No Odell means more targets to go around in the passing game. Last week, Bryant burst onto the scene, uh, catching four or five balls, 56 yards, two touchdowns, to the tune of, what is this guy doing? To the tune of 21 (laughs) fantasy points a game. Fucking guy's trying to get in my my aisle over here. He don't know what the hell, I think he's drunk. Does he not know that you're recording a podcast, Patrick? What an Does he asshole. Have, what an asshole. Golly, I got my light on and everything. I mean, for crying out loud. Welcome so to the Muskegon. Raiders have struggled. Yeah, right. The last few weeks against the likes of Travis Kelsey and Rob Gronkowski. Um, this kid fits that mold. He's big. He's physical. He's athletic. Uh, I'm going to have some flyers out there with Bryant this week. Good little money-saving option at the tight end position. And, uh, yeah, man. And there goes that guy now going 100 miles an hour <laughs> that could barely stay between the white lines two seconds ago. Well, let, let's get back to what's important real quick, Patrick, okay? Basically, what you are telling me is you're very into a young, athletic, big tight end this week. I absolutely am. You're gonna slap yes. you're gonna slap that tight end into some of your lineups this week. 
I am going to slap that tight end into some of my lineups this week. Um, and I'm hoping that he can grab some balls. <laughs> yeah, you're damn right he can. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I am I am almost positive Harrison Bryant's going to be my my most highly owned tight end this week. Yeah, I like the I kid. Mean, I'm I serious. actually rostered him last week in a couple rosters. I He's, yeah. I mean, you're already talking about, you know, the cost saver right there that you need um, if you want to pair Rodgers and Adams and, and Thielen, you know. You go ahead and, you know, you put Bryant in at tight end. You can run Demarcus Robinson in there. Run that back with, if you know, Crowder if he's playing. If not, here's a bonus Hail Mary for you. Denzel Mims. Um, you can run Demarcus Robinson back with the uh, Denzel Mims. Throw Harrison in there, and all of a sudden you've got enough money to start, you know, putting some decent running backs in there. So so there's a little sneaky MME um, Millie Maker lineup for you. Yeah, baby. All right, Patrick. Well, before some drunk guy uh, murders you, um, let's go ahead and call this one quits. Uh, Try not to catch up to him or anything, but uh, I look forward to this week, and we'll see if my uh, fantastic notes pan out or if I'm just a fucking doofus. Well, you're a doofus, but I wish you the best of luck, and uh, go blue tomorrow. You're goddamn right. Go blue.